you're living in the past. Black, the future of entertainment now. Movies and series, European football channels, from only five rand. From being a junior at Bitvest Vitz, he left to go to Vitoria Setabal in Portugal. Then from there he was in Lance in France, came back in the year 2000 to play for Orlando Pirates, moved on to Morocco Swallows, then Ajax Cape Town, Jomo Cosmos, Maritzburg United, Tembisa Classic, and then ended a career in 2008 in Malaysia. It's Junaid Hartley. Junaid, it's good to have you in the studio with me. My yeah. man, I've just gone through that career so, so quickly, but I need to shine a little bit to our viewers at home. Yeah. I actually played with you, like, not like with you because you are a much better player but right. in our junior days at Vitz I got to see the kind of skill and tremendous footballer that you would be under 12 under 13 under 14 under 15 oh my the whole yeah. of the junior place used to just say tell the Janae, people Janae. you were better than me never. until you drank ATV <laughs> <laughs> never yeah. ever Janae you were everything you were everything in the junior days and we always knew you were going to be that player yeah but I think um to a certain degree, you can say I've uh, underachieved, actually. Uh -huh. uh, could have gone and achieved much more. But we take what we've gotten out of the game and we just have to move forward. Yeah. But what makes worse. you say that? Why do you feel like you hadn't? You know, so a lot of players in this country have never even got near France or got near playing in Portugal. You went to those countries. Yeah, but what's the use? You go there and you just make up numbers. Go there and make a difference. Go mm. there and do something, you know. It's what was wrong? Why didn't you make a difference? Because you had skills. I saw it with my own eyes. Uh, we, I think we long past the, the, the areas where we look for excuses. You know, um, we don't want to blame injuries at that time that forced us to go from one club to another club in Europe while still being injured on loan. Mm. And then they send you to South Africa and you have to force your way and get your own operation done here and wait for another six months before you can get playing again. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think there was just a lot of stop-starts during a, in a critical age, at a critical age. So yeah, that, that contributed a lot to m me becoming a little bit despondent. Mm. And also at the time, returning to South Africa where I just had a brief stint, stint in Europe. Yeah, you were there at Lance for uh, what, two years, 98 to 2000, then yeah. you came back to Orlando Then Pirates. I came back, I actually went to Seven Stars, but I came back, had an operation, waited for six months for Rob Moore to try and get my clearance. Mm. And we struggled to get my clearance from Lance because they yeah. wanted me to return to France. We wanted, I wanted to recover in South Africa. I was already fed up, I had to pay for my own operation. But you can't blame injuries, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Rob got me released for a while to play for Seven Stars on loan, did the business, got you my way back into the national team. And at the end of that loan period, I was told by my agent, Gary Bloomberg, that um, Lance doesn't want me anymore. I was like, what? They don't want me anymore. Why? I've just worked my way back into a national team. They don't want you in France now. They don't want now. me anymore. And then I said, okay, if they don't, I want to go back on, on uh, like the third, fourth, fifth year of my contract. And I was like, no, no chance. You're not going? The, um, they don't want you back. Okay, they don't want me back. Let them, let them give me my clearance. You let did have a reputation negotiate. though, eh? You were but the they bad still boy wouldn't, of South they still wouldn't, football. They still wouldn't release the clearance. So if mm. you don't want me, give me my clearance. Let me go and play. No problem. We'll try again. But they refused. But they refused already when, when that happened. Now it was already the beginning of the end. That early? Yeah, that early. I mean, that's 2000. You, you, your career only ended in 2008. You're Completely saying... Completely despondent after that. Um, even while Seven Stars going to Pirates, I had to wait almost a whole year at Pirates while the case was at dispute resolution mm. chambers mm. before I could actually kick a ball again competitively. So another year. So six months, you work your way back into a national team and then you offer another year. Mm. I think and psychologically for any player... At that age, um, to come back is almost impossible. And you go from club to club then. It's Swallows, it's Ajax, it's Cosmos, it's Maritzburg. Uh, after that, you... Tembisa Classic. The end, it's, uh, like I said, after that is the beginning of the end. You then eventually get to Malaysia, where it really ends, no, in well, 2008. And then you come back to South Africa. 
Now, that's where I really want to take the story. Because yeah. you come back to South Africa in 2008. Yeah. And it's over. Football is now done for you. But yeah. you've had a career. There should be some money put away. You're okay. Around Christmas time, how does it that your life goes so wrong? Um, I had a party at my house over a weekend. With a few friends. And obviously, there's, everybody knows now there was narcotics at the party. And... Uh, when I could realize and open my eyes again, it was like eight, nine years later. Before that day, you'd never touched drugs? Uh, honestly, I did take it social. I took ecstasy on a social level uh, during, during those breaks, waiting for a clearance, mm -hmm. like just, just around after I joined. But you controlled for it pirates. Then. Yeah. You controlled it. Yes, it became an addiction. And then when your career ended, it became, it an became an addiction. the reverse. It became an addiction after I got back from Malaysia. Yep. How bad did it get? Uh, like I've said this before, when you lose your vanity, sanity, and you have completely out of touch with reality, you lose... Out of it. I out remember, it. Janae, um, I mean, I saw you the one day, you wouldn't have seen me, but I saw you the one day in Florida. It was pouring with rain. Pouring. Yeah. I've never seen rain like that. Yeah. And you were walking in the street, like absent. You were, it wasn't you. You know, well, I'm still waiting for myself to be present. That is just the one. That's just part of the side effects of the talking abuse. to yourself, walking down the street. It was that bad for you, Janine. Besides talking to yourself and walking on the street, at least you're walking still. There were days where you couldn't even walk. Where you'd find yourself on the street. I lived on the street for a while. Mm. Stays my father would practice tough love and wouldn't open up the door for me. And yeah, so it's been it's been a rough 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 road but with god's grace my family's pulled together and he helped me try to pull myself towards myself hmm. and hopefully from here onwards it could get better you're celebrating a, a milestone right it's a year now giving up drugs is no celebration it shouldn't happen in the first place so don't look at it as uh, something to be proud of it must never happen your parents tell you that your teachers tell you the the dangers um, you go to madrasa, you go to Sunday school, they let you know every day, constantly, they remind you, it's everywhere, that these are the dangers and these are the side effects of this. So why didn't other. you listen? You tend to think you are bigger than everybody else when you are in a place of contentment. When I got back from Malaysia, there was no need for me to indulge in anything that was wrong because I was Psychologically, in a good space, I was financially, I was okay. Mm. I wasn't what I could have been, but it was something that I could have worked on and that could have sustained me if it was worked well, worked with in the pro in a proper way. So Within a space of a few years, I, the house was gone, the cars were gone. It was like wow, gone, gone, gone. Not gone. a cent to your name. Not a cent. Uh, even a cent would be too much. Was it that bad, Junaid? I mean, that, that, that it's bad. It's unimaginable how bad it was. Um, I was completely out of touch with reality. I was hallucinating half the time. I was you saw things. Crazy, crazy accusations. Um, when you find yourself not even being a shadow of your former self in every department, mm. you're in serious trouble. But... But, yeah. As much as you lived on the street, you were out of it, you weren't even, your family wouldn't let you in the house. Yeah. You, you know, I, I still cannot forget you scoring two goals against an under-20 team for, I mean, for, with Bafana, with the under-20 South African team against France. Thierry Henry was playing in that team against yeah. you. Trezeguet was playing against you. I know that, Janaid. And... I see now that you're on the path to going back to being that. You're, what, 40 years of age now? What are you doing? I almost, yeah. What are you doing now? Uh, nothing much. I've just started a little bit of coaching, grass, grassroots level. Mm -hmm. But um, I still haven't made up my mind as to what is the right way forward. There's still certain areas of my life that I need to regain uh, before I go into soccer wholeheartedly. 
What do you still need to get right? <sighs> Firstly, um, I think I need to get the confidence back. I need to get the charisma back because with football comes a lot of charisma that makes you have a feeling you for the game. You had attitude, man. So it's got nothing to do with this. So once it. you get that feeling of the game back again, you can then do the job properly. But so far, so good. Not too bad. Uh. Could be better, but uh, yeah, could have been worse as well. It's Christmas time. It's festive time. It's a time that's difficult for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, what's your, what do you want to sell out South Africans to know? That it's a period that you shouldn't take things for granted. What could start off as having fun for one night can become a lifelong problem that can affect, can affect, your, can affect so many people around you. Um, your family and without you even realizing your friends, it can take your whole life away from you. So just be careful what you do and mm. to use the excuse that I'm doing it in moderation or socially is... It's dangerous. Don't don't play with things that you shouldn't be playing with. Junaid? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm nice so, you. so proud of you. Thank you. And it's good to see you looking nice amazing you. again. <laughs> and shared over for myself. Yeah, man. Don't yeah. leave yet. Don't nice leave yet. This is Junaid Hartley, ladies and gentlemen, and a great footballer and a human being back in the kind of shape that we've always wanted to see him in. Shampoonizer, what do you have to say? Thomas, you don't know where I am, my guy. There's people who are flanking me right now. They've been on TV before Facebook, before Twitter, before even plasma screens. So I'm going to show you how you do this thing. Hi, I'm Shampoonaza, and you are? Phil Masinga. And you are? Gareth Brown. And Simone Cruz. <laughs> After the break. <laughs> Thanks, Janet. Are you sure about that? Yeah, but make it a castle free. <laughs> castle free. Zero percent alcohol. One hundred percent castle. That lucky goal took us to the World Cup. <laughs> 1998, Phil Masinga. No, you know what? Let's tell the truth about that goal. Yeah? Phil, that ball bounced at just, just a little bit. Yeah? It yes. became a volley. Let's yeah. tell the truth. You know, McFish always says it's a missed kick. Yeah? McFish always says it's a missed kick. He's jumping and the saw you just to allow it. No, but you know, I'm going to go jump because the pitch is being okay. Uh, level. Manje, I waited for that bounce. Oh, we because made it. That bounce, now you figure. In niggas are more power uh, when, when I'm shooting. Look carefully here. At the moment of striking the ball, that ball, it's as though the football god said South Africa are going to the World Cup. It just lifted up and ha, and you hammered it home. We'll never, never be able to thank you enough for that, to take us to France, to give us that opportunity to see the dog celebrating. But it's not the interview I wanted to do with you today. Mm -mm. We have so many f professional footballers, Phil, who play around the world, who play in Europe, who play in... But I don't think South Africans really know. Phil Masinga, you are one of the greatest exports we have ever had. The level of player that you played with and against, I don't think... Almost any other South African can say they played with the kind of players and against the kind of players you played with. Let me shine a little bit for South Africans. Mm -hmm. Phil Masinga played against Arsenal in 1994 when he was at Leeds, scored a brace yes. and beat Arsenal. Mm. Here? Yes, yes. It was in 1994. I remember uh, uh, it was my first year at, at Leeds United. Uh. And, you know, most of the time I was sitting on the bench and then the coach just surprised me. He started me with the game, and uh, the first goal was brilliant because I, I rounded the goalkeeper, uh. and I was alone with the goal, so I had to tap it in. Uh. And the second one, um, I slid it on the ball. Halalasha. It went in. And people don't know. I think if they don't follow football from those days, that Arsenal team of the 90s 
was the most well-known solid defense. Abo Nigel Winterburn, Abo Tony Adams, Abo Keown. Mm. The, the theme song back then, the fans at Arsenal used to sing 1-0 to the Arsenal because every game was 1-0. Emuva Bebakia, you scored a brace, won that game. There's another game I want to talk about because when you went to Italy, because this man went to Italy, and when not when Italy was now what you know now, mm -hmm. when Italy was the main place for every great footballer, they were there. You played against Inter Milan. That Inter Milan team had the original Ronaldo in it. You beat Inter that day with Ronaldo of Brazil playing. Playing, yes, uh, it, it was a great game. Uh, uh, actually, we were playing in San Siro. Isa. And Isa. Uh, oh, yes. hey, there yes. was a captain uh, in Inter Milan. His name, well, his name is uh, Bergomi. Uh -huh. he, he once been uh, an Italian captain as mm. well. So the national team, yeah. Yeah. Then you had Bergomi, you had Zanetti, uh, you, you, you had all these top class players. Rekoba, uh, who was coming from Uruguay, and on that day, Bar Barry was far better than. Uh, is a in time. I mean, you made uh, the score 2 0. We had Zamporta, but the Zamporta won the World Cup with uh, 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 Italy. Uh. And then he was part of my, my team. We had a small boy then. His name is Cassano. Uh, he was still sitting on the bench, but he became one of the top players in Italy. I'm going to continue shining with you here because South Africans need to know. Now, you've mentioned a couple of them from Inter Milan who you played against that day. You, all, you also played against Zinedine Zidane when he was at Juventus, Alessandro Del Piero at Juventus, Inzaghi, Didier Deschamps. If I go to Roma, you played against Francesco Totti at, yes. when you played against AC Milan. This was games every week. Every week you were playing against Paolo Maldini, Gattuso, Serginio, Oliver Bierhoff, Andrei Shevchenko. This was your life every week with the best players I have ever seen in my life. It was really exciting. I mean, to have to play against those kind of players. I mean, uh, you always want to do your best and you know that you're competing with the best in the world. And every week, there was no way of uh, 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 not performing to your best level because you know that you're competing with the best. And you were in Serie A, the top league at the time, the best in the world. They could have sent you home at any time because you're not good enough. But they didn't. They kept you in the most toughest defensive league in the world. Phil Masinga was a striker in that league. How did that feel? Like I said, uh, very exciting. I mean, uh, sometimes to be compared with uh, players like Batistuta, it, it, it gives you pleasure. Hey, and, uh, I'll say, hey, these guys, uh, uh, what are they saying? They, they're comparing me with Could Batistuta. Team, but today, the clash, you know, Batistuta. <laughs> Against Phil Massinga. See it today live on Italian soccer. It was that. Y you know what I mean? So your message to these youngsters. I mean, they go overseas, come back after one season. Mm -hmm. You did it. You've done it. You've, you know, people don't talk about that about you enough. Uh, I think lots of people will say, Phil probably was fortunate or Lucas was fortunate. You know, it had, we had to have a lot of hard work uh, to stay in a foreign country where, as a foreigner, they expect you to do better than local mm. players. You must excel each and every game that you're playing. Then it's, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't become easy. It makes you work more harder. Are the are there players of this generation softer than you were? No, uh, I don't think they're, they're soft. Probably it's, it's a system and the attitude amongst themselves. And uh, most of them... Uh, they don't want to go out of this country and compete with the best in the world. But comfortable. And they are comfortable with what they're getting at home. And they don't want to go and have problem of having snow during winter times. I am Marco Abo Maldini. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Maldini is one of the greatest defenders of all time. And you used to play against him every week. Phil, you also currently... I, I keep calling you Phil and I should use your correct title. Sorry, South Africa, I didn't use it. <laughs> Deputy President of the SA Masters and Football Legends Association, Thomas Singer, DP, Deputy President. Um, you've got a huge thing coming up this weekend. Football Festival, Ama Legends, Nama Masters, is away in Zarabupi. Uh, it will be happening in Dobsonville on the 17th. Uh, it will be part of celebrating. So Sunday, is yeah. a Sunday. Los Sunday, Los Sunday. At Dobsonville, we want people good bad quality. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be two teams, Banyana Banyana, former uh. Banyana Banyana, 
uh? teams, and then we will be having four teams from Amajita. And I'm a player. Yeah, man, if I want to go and see Les Zaktala, Les Ms. Petis, in Tesim Nine, who will I see? So, Banobos Koko, Sierra and then uh, Fanny Madida. Yeah? We'll be participating there. Uh, Jerry Scorsana <laughs> will be there. And then we'll have Poshi Amudise. Yeah? Who will be participating as well. And not Lele. And then, Those are just a few. Just yeah, to name a few. Just to name a few. But like, like, like I said, we, we're celebrating 25 years of South Africa playing internationally. Mm. We're celebrating people who contributed in football. People like the late Asian Zwilling, they've done a lot. If they had an opportunity to play Afcon, they could have won probably Afcon more, more than we won, it. we won it. Deputy President of the uh, SA Masters and Football Legends Association, George Dernley said I must also throw his name in there just to say to George Nayokona, the Zulu Shark. Yeah, we tried to pick him, but they <laughs> said he, he's too slow. You can't run anymore. I try, George, I try. And the nice thing today, Phil, I love taking you, just talking about that great career. And I think South Africans learned a lot about how immense this man was in terms of what he was able to open in doors for footballers to come. England, Italy, Switzerland, years abroad, week after week, against the best. And that's Phil Massinga for you right here on Sport at 10. We're going to be back after the break with Gareth Broad. Gareth, we'll see you in a second. We'll check your sports knowledge. Iba yuka ulimpilo yako. Wakale manja mnyervi. Wachate nuskate sotwa zuzonge. Shola manje, lapa manje, pila kusasa. Brothers for Life, jenza kaashe. Dingo! We are one. <laughs> Gareth Brown, you were instrumental back in the day in Simunye. We are one. SABC One was a different place then. You were one of the continuity presenters back in the day. Mm -hmm. It's good to have you on Sport at 10. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Hearing that music, looking it's at yourself, fun. what do you think? It brings back lots of memories. Ten years ago, we actually started Yamampela when Yamampela just started from Simunye to Yamampela. Sure. Dalu mm. corner, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Dalu corner. So, you're from Clarksdorp, right? Uh-huh. I've been to Clarksdorp a few times. Mm -hmm. Didn't expect that, you know, Clarksdorp had the Gareth Browns of the world coming from there. Oh, there's lots of talent coming from Clarksdorp, eh? I mean, you had Phil Massinga earlier. He's yes. also from Clarksdorp. There's so many great people coming but from Clarksdorp. But when you go there, when it does, it's just Kuma and <laughs> dust and mines and what, what, and then you're in Clarksdorp. But, but you see what the dust produces. I'm produces looking. I'm looking. Us. It does. It does. It does. It's amazing. You were Miss Clarksdorp. Then you went on to being a Miss Essay finalist. Mm -hmm. that, that is quite a journey, though, mm -hmm. from Clarksdorp to Miss Essay. Yes, it is. I mean, I always wanted to be more than just be someone living in Clarkstorp. My dream was always to get to Joburg, uh. you know, so I worked towards that. I always entered competitions, had magazines to see, you know, what the next big competition is that I can enter. One of my biggest national competitions was the Miss Teen, uh, Miss Teen South Africa. It was you, Hayes Gunwood, back then, and that just opened up doors for How me. How do you end up on TV? It was also through a beauty pageant. I won the Miss Black Like Me, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I went for interviews. And there was auditions, open in auditions. It was a long process. I think it took me about four to five months. And eventually, they only chose one out of thousands. <laughs> and I made it. And you know, back then, when, the, when we had continuity presenters, and you said, mm -hmm. coming up next is this fantastic show, and this is what's going to happen later and stuff. You guys were like the most famous South Africans of all South Africans. Yes, we were. You know? Mm -hmm. You were everything. You, you walked down the street in a mall. It must have Everyone just been knows. everything. Mm -hmm. And there weren't so many channels back then. So it was just SABC. So everybody knew you. you uh. know, everybody watched SABC. And then now you put your, you turn your back on television, you go into the corporate world, you've turned your back on the corporate <laughs> world now. What are you doing now, Gareth? 
Well, now I've got my own company. It's called G's Entertainment. But my main focus is events. Uh -huh. I also have a foundation. It's called Girl Power Foundation. And that foundation, we do various events where we empower young girls. This past weekend, we actually had one of my pageants. It's called the Miss High School South Africa pageant. Mm. And um, basically what it is about, it's about mentoring young girls and making them see what, what their purpose is in life. Because you said that to me. You said, I left the corporate world mm -hmm. to follow my purpose. Yes. What is Gareth Brown's purpose? My purpose is also to give young girls the opportunities that I had, to make them see that there's more to than just, you know, the drugs, teenage pregnancies, all that. There's more to, to value themselves more. That is my purpose. You know, I was in corporate, like I said, when I left the SBC, I went to corporate, and it was just for stability, uh, but it wasn't my purpose. For the man. It was. Just it for was the man. for the money, you know. Well, for the cupcakes. <laughs> Here it is, the Sport of 10 Cup. We're going to ask you a few questions, mm -hmm. and they're very tailored to you. Mm -hmm. It's got Klerstorp, it's got some of your life experiences in it, so let's see if you can tell us. Mm -hmm. Who's this? Grace Lechote. Why would you even <laughs> begin to know this rhythmic gymnastic star of South Africa? Because she's also from where I'm from. She's from Clemstown. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Okay, let's move on to the next question for uh, Gareth. And Gareth, the, this World Cup, mm -hmm. you were there, right? Yep. You were there? I was there. <laughs> Which World Cup is this? This is 2006. Which country? In Germany, that's Italy. You were there? I was there. What an experience. It was an I was amazing actually there, experience. And I never saw you. I was there, I was at that final, and you oh, didn't really? say hi. No. <laughs> that's how it is. Last question. Uh huh. Colleague. Who is this colleague of yours from back in the day? This is Muzi. <laughs> Mac Messina. Mac Messina. We called him Muzi. Here? Ah, uh, you've got three out of three. <laughs> She's got it right. Oh he my. went on to be a Springbok Sevens, but he was also Simunye. Mm -hmm. We are one with Mac yeah, Messina. Yeah. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Both mine. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yo, Double exhaust. <laughs> yes, we're not playing games here. Um, Barocca, Barocca won on the Q1. 1.5 million Thomas. Uh. Yeah, they, they have money now. They ask Kuluko, what are you going to do with it? Yo, mututle bapatela di society. 1.5 million. But you know what people see you guys uh, tomorrow? Uh, Atama yeah. Forgotten is dancers, but I give all trendsetters. David Cow, Samari Tabiso, State Theatre tomorrow. Gareth, nice to see you. Eh? Nice I feel like I'm too. dreaming. <laughs> yeah, we are. And it's like a girl with a boy's name. Yeah. Gareth yes. Brown. Gareth Good Brown. to have you yes. on the show. Good to see you. We're going to leave you with the words we leave you with every single week, which is if you're not watching Sport at 10, what are you doing? Club Empire, this is a KZN at Deben. For the inspectors, the group is in Swem. They are coming to the bridge. Swem, Swem, Swem.